it's a, a 2d force and couple system as shown okay where is it okay let me check the equivalent resultant force and couple moment acting at a okay we have to find a couple at a and then the equivalent single force located along the beam so okay so let's do uh, go uh, uh, one by one uh, yes and uh, the very first thing we need is the equivalent resultant force let us look at the equivalent resultant force uh, so what we've got here we've got horizontal force we've got a component of this one one of the one component is going downward i'll put it here so that you don't get confused that's my vertical downward and this is my this is my horizontal force so uh, some of all the force along x would be this component and this component that are the two components along the x direction and some of the all force along y would be this one and this component here once i've got my x and y i can get the resultant out and i can get the angle out so in simple words uh, so for long x uh, which is uh, which is this and component of this one and so for long y which is this and a component of this one so that's negative remember downward and that's also negative that's downward the component is downward that's the component acting downward so i can get the the uh, the uh, for components out okay and uh, uh, that's the the r a where is what's r a yes sir what is kilo newton doing at the results 42.5 kilo newton that's because the results are in kilo newton yeah there's a mistake the yeah, newtons here so apologies yes should be kilo newton is newton yeah yeah so that it shouldn't be a kilo newton it's newton uh why is calculating the uh, okay just let's move from here to here now so once we've got some of all the x and some of all the y we can get our resultant out and we can also get the angle out so getting the resultant and angle out is relatively easy okay so now that's our fr and we know the angle of it also now uh, this fr let me look at the question what's the question apologies okay it says that we need to find the equivalent resultant force and couple moment acting at a and then we need to find the equivalent single force okay the first thing we need to do is to find the resultant force and also we need to find the moment acting at point a so so we need to find the moment acting at point a and then we need to replace the moment uh, with a single force so the effect is the same okay yes that's fine so uh, going back uh, we've already calculated our uh, resultant force you can with the angle and if you take moment at point a you got this force into this distance you got this force into this distance you then got uh, this force line into this distance and the component this component which x here doesn't have a perpendicular distance from a so will not create any moment so moment at point a comes out to be this is that clear so i've got the moment and i've got the resultant force is that clear yes sir okay now sir will be question i want to component of 35 newton force the horizontal horizontal component of the no because because uh the the if i if i've got two co components that this one and this one this component the top one doesn't apply here it applies here now what's the perpendicular distance from okay. this line that's my force line and there's no perpendicular distance 
So therefore, the horizontal component does not create any moment at A. Is that okay? Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay. Okay, now, so so I've got the moment. I've got my moment. This is the moment acting. Ignore the K value. And this is the moment acting at point A. And I've got the resultant force also. Now, the question I want to ask, which is a bit of common sense, uh, which force I can ignore and which force is important for the creation of this torque? Which force is responsible? I will call this as A and this as B. Which component you think is creating this moment? A is this one. B is this one. Which one is that the moment created due to both the component forces? Sir, A. Or because of the only A. one component? Sir, B. Sir, A. Sir, sir, B. Y. A, sir. Y. Uh, B, sir, B. Sir, depend on the component. Sir, 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 sir. Hmm? Sir, B component. B, of course, it has to be in this direction. So, the second, let me get rid of this. So therefore, the moment, moment created, and so the given a single force can be located on the beam, and I've got the moment divided by the Y component, and it tells me the distance here. Is that right? Sir, you didn't FR, which was 65.9. FR. Interesting, interesting. Let me go back and you read the question again. Sir, the moment produced not produce any X component. No, 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 no. Every component creates a moment. Read the question. Read the question carefully and concentrate on those lines. Now, watch, let me go. I am looking the effect of forces here, okay? If I do sum of all the forces along x, y, okay, my resultant comes out to be here. It will have a y component and it will have an x component. Stay with me, okay? Am I right? The results, the sum of all the forces acting at point A would be the X uh, would be, would have two components, Y and X. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Yes. Sir. Okay. We have also calculated the moment that is created at point A, which was, uh, which is round, which is round about, which is round about 10 Newton meter. So at point A, I've got 10 Newton meter being applied and I've got resultant force. Clear? Okay, now, it, sorry. Come on. What happened? Yes. Is it clear so far? So at, let me say again. So at point A, I've got a moment created which is around 10 Newton, and a resultant force, which we've already calculated, which is how much uh, resultant force was uh, uh, 66, I'll put it as 66. So my resultant force is 66 Newton. So my resultant force has got two components. I've got this Y component, 
and I've got this X component. Okay, now my Y component, if I move the resultant force here, sorry, if I move the resultant force here, okay, I have moved it along this direction, okay. Now, my X component is still here and my Y component is still here. I have moved my resultant from here to this point. That's my resultant force. Now, if I look at the X component, is the X component contributing to the moment at point A? No, sir. No, sir. No. Okay. okay, so that's fine. So I'll get rid of X because it doesn't create any moment. Now look at Y. If I move Y, will it change my Newton meter force, uh, the torque? Yes, sir. So Y component affects the, the moment. So if I have, watch, if I have a resultant force, FR, and this is the Y component of it, because you told me that the X component does not affect the moment. So at point A, I've got my FR and I've got my FY. FY is 50. FY is 50 Newton. I'll get rid of this now. So on A, I've got 10 Newton meter and in Y direction, I've got 50 and in X direction, I have got 42 Newton. So I now want to create 10 Newton meters. So I will move my Y to a new distance, to a new distance so that I can get rid of this one. So the effect is the same. Is that clear? So if I move my Y from here to here, I will create a moment at point A. Is that right? Yes, sir. Yes. That's exactly what it does. Okay. So moment divided by the Y component tells me if I move the resultant force at a distance of point, Two, one. So if I move my resultant force from here to this place, which is two zero point point two one zero, the moment uh, it will be an equivalent system, equivalent single force system. Then is that clear? Yes, sir. Question. Okay. The previous okay. Result was uh, the net resultant moment was uh, anti-clockwise but the uh, moment which is now being generated by the single equivalent force is <coughs> the clockwise it would be clockwise so they are both in uh, sorry opposite. hold on let me let me okay, let clockwise me yeah, because this, this component is here and the moment the moment here that's the sign telling us it is clockwise, okay? And the Y component creates a clockwise, same thing, okay? Okay, let's, let's move on. 